Hello friends, it's Paul and today I'm surrounded by some old hardware. Um, I'm fascinated by stuff that was top of the line, you know, 10, 11 years ago and you know, what, what can I do to make this stuff, can, well, actually continue to run under Windows 10. Uh, I bought this, oh God, I bought this in 2010 and this is back in 2006, this is an HP XW8400 workstation and this was quite the killer workstation back in the day for stuff like SolidWorks, uh, you know, a lot of video editing and, and things like that. So what we'll cover in this video is I've been digging around on eBay trying to find out what the high-end hardware was back in the heyday for this thing and let's see how it fares under Windows 10. So let's talk about what this box is. So back when this computer came out in 2006, this was the system for CAD. It is a dual, it will has dual processors. So it has two Xeon 5160, three gigahertz processors. There are physically two processors in there and each processor is a dual core. So each processor has two. Uh, so that gives this PC a tremendous amount of power and processing power to do what it needs to do to, for example, encode video or CAD stuff, uh, coupled with the NVIDIA Quadro cards that are available for it. Uh, it just, it was back in the day, it was a tank. Um, they also made a version of this, although it was 2.66 gigahertz, but it had two processors and they were quad processors. So each processor had four processors on board. Uh, I know this is hard to keep track of, but just trust me, it's worth it. So that being said, when this was brand new uh, with those two Xeon processors, it came at two gig of RAM and it came with a 320 gig hard drive. Now the price for this beast right here uh, was $5,000 oh! plus. Uh, I, I was looking around online, I found a few that were $5,500. Um, and, you know, it didn't even include any crazy software. We're talking, you know, Windows XP 64-bit or even Vista. So, I mean, back in the day, I mean, this thing was a tank. And it feels like a tank, too. It's a very well-built computer. It's got a lot of fans. The RAM has a fan. It's just, when I show you what's inside of here, you'll be really, really impressed. Um, so it came off lease, and I found it on eBay in 2010, and I spent $375 on it. And when I received it, uh, within the next few years, the only thing I did was upgrade the RAM. Uh, it has 12 gig of RAM right now, and I removed the hard drive, and I put a Samsung Evo 850 solid state hard disk in there, which should do wonders for the throughput, but this thing has onboard RAID, and it doesn't have AHCI support, so even though it's faster than a mechanical hard drive, you know, it's... Eh, you know, so there's a, you know, I haven't thrown a lot of money at this thing. So basically what I've been doing is just been getting by with it. It's not my day to day. I use my laptop every day, but I still, when this thing ran Windows 7, it was a very good computer. Uh, it does have two Quadro cards in there. I think they're 1500s. Don't quote me on that. We'll find out when I take them out. But uh, it, just impressive to have that much, you know, graphical firepower. The... Uh, the, the, the big thing that I wanted to do was the mistake that I made is I upgraded this thing to Windows 10 Home because it was a free upgrade. And it's been doing all the additional upgrades over you know, the anniversary update, the creators update, and what have you. What's happened since we went to Windows 10 Home is that Windows 10 Home will only see one physical processor. So Windows 7 would see both processors and then use all the cores and did great. Windows 10, it's basically been cut in half. So I see a lot of CPU bottlenecking on this. So I am curious, you know, I don't think Home is going to do a whole lot for me. I think we'll wind up having an upgrade to Windows 10 Professional, which does support multiple processors. They call them sockets. But I was just really curious what it would cost to, you know, to upgrade this thing, you know, as make it as awesome as it would have been back in the day. So the other things that I've done is on eBay, I went and I found RAM for this guy. Now, 
This has eight slots, and it can only take four. Gig, it can only go as I'm trying to say it correctly. Each slot can only go as high as four gig. So these right here, each one of these is four gig. So eight times four is 32. So after we do the RAM upgrade, this thing will have 32 gigs of RAM. And as you guys know from your computers, you know anything over 16 gig should be just flying. So we'll see if that helps at all. The other thing that I've done is I found, this is a NVIDIA Quadro 5000. This is kind of like what started the, this is like the framework of what the modern video cards are built on. It's got 300 and I think 92 qua, you know, Kudo cores and things of that nature. Uh, that card, by the way, when it was brand new, was $2,499. I got it on eBay for 99. Got the RAM for 29. So as you can see, we spent less than 150 bucks just to kind of see if this upgrade is going to work. And if we have to upgrade Windows Home to Professional, that's going to be $99. So, you know, we're, we're still not spending a tremendous amount of money. It's under 300 bucks, but I just really want to see with some killer hardware and, you know, maybe upgrading Windows, if this thing would be usable for things like this work I do in Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, some of the CAD stuff I like to play with. I just, I can't throw this thing away because it has, it has two three gigahertz processors. So what we'll do is we'll get this guy uh, opened up. We'll take out some of the old hardware, start putting this in here, and uh, we'll take a look at the benchmarks and see how things are going. Okay, the case is open. <clears throat> First thing I'll show you here is the, uh, there's a little button here to get the There is all of our currently installed RAM, and it's not tremendous. All of the RAM is out. Okay, <clears throat> they're all in there. I'm gonna give them an extra little push just to make sure everyone's latched in. Move these cables and, and there. All right, let's see if the computer sees the new memory. Okay, guys, we're back, and uh, I've been using uh, Passmark to do the uh, uh, before and after for uh, doing the uh, benchmarks. Because uh, we're dealing with old hardware, um, Passmark looked like it was the best because it seemed like it could, well, it ran perfectly fine on the old computer to begin with. Uh, I had some uh, uh, PC mark and some other stuff, and uh, that's definitely aimed at some newer hardware. So uh, that's what I'm basing my results on is uh, from Passmark. So before we did any upgrading, uh, we scored 382.5. And the one number you're going to see as I put these up on the screen here is that the disk mark and the memory mark aren't going to change a whole bunch as we go through. We're going to see big changes in the CPU, uh, 2D, and 3D. And as you can see, before we mess with anything, the CPU scored 1983, uh, the 2D was 367.9, uh, and the 3D benchmark was 40.3. Pretty abysmal. Now, uh, then to the next screen here, what I did is this is after we, uh, we removed the old cards and uh, we dumped the old RAM and we installed 32 gig of RAM. We installed the Quadro 5000, ran the diagnostics, and we went from 382 to 1509.8. And, uh, you know, pretty, pretty impressive results. And uh, the CPU mark, of course, uh, went up slightly because, well, you know, it's, it's you know, it, there's no change to the CPU really uh, because we're still dealing with Windows 10 Home, so we weren't seeing that second CPU. But where the fun is, is in the 2D graphics mark and the 3D graphics mark, those guys shot way, way up. They jumped uh, the 2D is 3D 2.8, and the 3D graphic mark shot up to 2935.0, uh, and an impressive jump from 40. 
Okay, so this looks good, right? So then we made the jump to Windows 10 Professional. We spent the $99 and thought, well, let's do it. Let's get that second CPU unlocked. And that certainly did help. Um, the pass mark rating on that brought us to 1890.8. The CPU mark uh, shot up significantly. We went from 2041 to 3746. And we pretty much stayed about the same on everything else with the 2D and the 3D, and of course uh, the memory mark and the disk mark. So we definitely saw some big gains by going to Windows Pro and also by adding the Quadro. So we didn't spend a ton of money, again, you know, with the, uh, with the expense of buying a Windows 10 uh, Professional, uh, you know, that added $100 to our budget, so to speak, and we got some okay results. Now that we have the basic information from our uh, uh, pass mark in performance testing, let's see how that made out in the real world. And what I can tell you is that, well, there, was, there were some good changes and there were some disappointments. Uh, first of all, let me, let me go through a few of these here real quick. So one of the first things I wanted to try out was I wanted to try out uh, Aces High, and that is a, a World War II flight sim. And the newest version is version 3, which would not even run on this computer with the old hardware. The Aces High version 2, the previous version, would run, but even then it wasn't running very well. But, uh, as you can see from some of these screenshots, uh, with Aces High 2 uh, fired up, with all the options turned on under graphics, it's still hauling around at 60 frames per second, and uh, not bad. Unfortunately, you can't play the game online with anybody. You can only do offline play. But I just wanted to see how, how well the Quadro did, and it did very well. The other game I play a lot of, and this is a really old game, from Nova Logic and Joint Operations. And again, I turned everything on on that one. And this plays well on the old system, but with all the graphics, all the bells and whistles turned on, everything you could think of, well, everything that DirectX 9 could give us, I mean, it was rocking 60 frames per second, pretty much solid all the way through. Um, you can see here on the screen where it shows where it's jumped to 62 and gone as low as 48, uh, but no CPU bottlenecking or anything. So if I'm running old stuff, it's gonna do okay. Now, since Aces High 3 wouldn't even run on the old computer, I downloaded the latest version, and it used to be that when I tried to start the game up, it would just bomb right out, right from there. Wouldn't even go. Well, this time around, it went. And with the basic settings, I, le I left most, most things to default settings, it would actually work. And as you can see, I'm jumping in the airplane here and, and going for a little flight. And just to, just to you know, kind of tempt fate, I decided, okay, well, let's land. And uh, let's take, uh, you know, one of the other airplanes up. I think in this scene here, I get the 38. I also took the ME-262 up, the German jet. And uh, I cranked those guys up as far as I could go. And uh, as you'll see, there's a significant stuttering going on as I, for example, fly down the runway here or as I start to bank and maneuver. Uh, it's definitely getting jumpy. But I scaled those settings back a good deal when I took the jet up and it ran fairly smooth. Um, it, you know, I'm not sure I would really want to game with the Quadro, but it just gave me some hope that, hey, you know, this thing, you know, this is old hardware, and it can run some stuff, and it could probably run Aces High 3 if I really scaled back a lot of settings. And in a graphical game like that, that's, that, that's really a terrible compromise I have to make. The next one we tried was Falcon 4 BMS, and this has been around forever, and it keeps on getting better over time because it's still being developed by uh, individuals that want to see the game continue to be developed and take advantage of the latest hardware. Now, obviously, we don't have that, but as I, as I can show you here in these clips, the F-16, the scenery, going through the clouds, everything looks really, really fantastic. So I, if I really wanted to get back into Falcon and back into you know gaming this one, this would be a lot of fun to fly with. Now, having said that, one of the other big hopes I had was I wanted to be able to do some of my Adobe Premiere Pro uh, work on this computer. Uh, now, getting into the program and it firing up and opening videos, that worked. Then we ran into problems. When we were previewing videos and trying to fast forward and back and forth, it was jumping and stuttering all over the place. And then what really still its fate for me was when I went to, for example, I'm taking this six minute video clip and what I did is I went to encode it with H.264 like I do with all my videos. 
this six minute video would have taken an excess of 12, 13, 15 minutes just to encode that short little video. And just to give you a ballpark on my laptop, which is an Intel i7, it's got 32 gig of RAM, it's got a solid state hard drive. I mean, it's not the latest and greatest, it's three years old, but even most of my YouTube videos that I, um, that I encode on that, most of those take about seven or eight minutes, even on the longer ones like this one, for example. So, so my hopes of reusing the old hardware for using Adobe Premiere Pro and stuff like that is kind of been dashed. I mean, okay, you know, we spent under $300 to make the big experiment, and some programs are going to run fantastic. I mean, you know, example, Falcon 4, Aces High, uh, my uh, joint operations. But my hopes of running stuff like the Adobe product line have, well, definitely been dashed. So uh, if you have old hardware like this, <laughs> you have to set your expectations. And because I didn't throw a lot of money into this, I didn't have high expectations. But I was surprised that, you know, for example, the Quadro did so, so well in the testing, and it did so well with some of the flying games. So, that being said, it was, it was a lot of fun to try, and uh, for what little we spent, I think we did okay. Okay, so that was a fun experiment in old hardware. I uh, thank you for watching. I would love to hear your comments in the comment section below. And as you can see over here is where you can subscribe. Please do so. Love to keep you in, uh, in contact with the latest videos. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool.